morning and welcome. Well, uh, but also um, great to see you all this morning as we um, celebrate our Eucharist for this first Sunday um, after Trinity. And uh, particularly warm well, welcome to those of you who are joining us online this morning. So we begin our service as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. And keep you in the love of Christ. And we say together, Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our brightness, and your spirit draw us to that love, shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Come now to our prayers of penitence till I invite you to sit or kneel as you feel more comfortable. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word, and dream, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and betrayed your hands, and say that your Son, Jesus Christ, has died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way, to walk as children of us. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to stand for the glory of the church. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Man of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you are the Lord of our Lord. You are the Lord of our Lord. You are the Lord of the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Colleague for the first Sunday after Trinity, let us pray. God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because with the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And sit down, brother, let's read. A slight change on our pew sheet. The first reading is from the book of Genesis. The man and the woman hear the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I hear the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent has tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals, and among all wild creatures. <coughs> Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. 
This is the word of the Lord. So we say together the words of Psalm 130. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my hope. Before the gods of life, give praise to you. I will I will your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. In the day that I called to you, you answered. You put new strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, for they have heard the words of my word. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he watches over the lowly, as the proud, he regards them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will preserve me. You will stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies, your right hand will save me. The Lord shall make good his purpose for me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. For safe is the work of your hands. Reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our, inner, our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I invite you to stand for the gospel response. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The crowd came together so that Jesus and the twelve could not eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul. And by the ruler of the demons he casts out his demons. And he called them to him, and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Sicut Deus, the serpent's crafty, you will be like God, from Genesis chapter 3, a little bit earlier than where our reading starts, in verse 4. It's the cunning appeal, the religious trick then, according to Dietrich Bonhoeffer, that leads to humankind's fall, although I think some prefer leap into rebellion against the Creator's word. To be like God, knowing good and evil, would seem probably on the face of it a good thing, even perhaps a godly thing. And so a pious serpent becomes the inexplicable agent of sin's infection of the creation as humankind manifests its discontent with merely being creatures in God's image and likeness. Why not eat of the forbidden tree and cut out God the middleman entirely, knowing good and evil without the mediation of God's word? And so then it is set in motion what the early church would come to, to know um, as sin, in the, come to sing even, in the chanted proclamation of the Easter Vigil as the Felix Corpa, the fortunate or the least necessary fault that by God's eternal will resulted in salvation brought through the death and resurrection of the Word made flesh in Jesus. According to Old Testament scholar Samuel Terrian, the narrator's intention in telling this story was simply to show the religious situation of humankind and to depict the sin of hubris par excellence as a lust for self deification of pastoral significance to us, though, is Terrian's observation that ritual acts and moral virtue tend to become techniques for human-initiated salvation, and that the use of morality as a substitute for a humble response to grace represents the ultimate idolatry. He concludes that this ancient narrative, then, does not intend to tell the history of the originating act of original sin, rather it's a true myth in the sense that it has never happened, but that it happens every day. But then, if Latin is your thing, and the intricacies of what came to be called the doctrine of original sin is not your choice of focus from this text, then let's consider the pastoral implications of the Creator's first, the very first direct address to humankind. God says, where are you? God's first words to humankind is posed as a question that, interestingly, will become for Jesus himself a characteristic interrogatory mode of teaching and proclamation. Where are you? God's originating address then exposes humankind's futile attempts to hide when fleeing from the implications of its own actions. And this ends up playing itself out in that sort of tragic comedy, handing on blame from man to woman to the snake. A traditioning that still lies at the heart of our practice of living in fear of the Creator, rather than that obedient trust most of the time. As Adam himself confesses in verse 10, I hear the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid. Sin then also alienates us from one another, and gets expressed in our sense of shame at our very creatureliness. One of Jesus' favourite Old Testament scholars, Walter Brueggemann, <laughs> or not, suggests that we might think of the serpent in the story as creation's very first theologian, who convinces humankind to trade obedience to God's word for theology about God. As such, it's a story that wants the theological talk, which seeks to analyse and objectify matters of faithfulness, is a dangerous enterprise. Further then, this also is a story that addresses the pressing pastoral issue of anxiety, 
referencing Jesus' understanding of anxiety in his Sermon on the Mount, Brueggemann sees that our story from Genesis, Genesis reveals how anxiety comes from doubting God's providence, from rejecting his care and seeking to secure our own well-being. The serpent seduces humankind into believing there are securities apart from the reality of God, and so failure to trust God with our lives proves to be death. There's another literary cr critic from Yale University who considers this story then not at all a moral tale, but a wry children's story that ends unhappily. When we were children, he surmises, we were terribly punished for being children. This might be called the essence of the story of humankind's first disobedience. It's not at all a fall, but a wounding estrangement, an expulsion from home, from a garden where God, who is both mother and father, likes to walk about while enjoying the cool breezes of the evening. What begins as a family romance gets transformed into a family tragedy. And so let's be honest with each other this morning then. Interpretation of Genesis 3 obviously varies widely between people. And this is only three of the snapshots of some of those interpretations. Maybe it is all summarised in that well-known phrase that many of us will have heard in the past. In Adam's fall, we sinned all. It is simply, if finally, inexplicably, that, this is some, that there is something wrong. There is something a bit messed up about us human beings at a core, maybe. Not necessarily bad or evil, but maybe a miss then. It's not that the image of God has been erased from our DNA, but that deep within ourselves we're not fully where we are meant to be. And what is more, we probably know it. We sense that there is an estrangement from our essential, created selves that is rooted in our alienation from our Maker and gets expressed in those behaviours that alienate us from one another. And what's more, as Reynolds Niebuhr made the basis of his widely influential public theology of realism, evil lies closest at hand when we are most intent on doing right and most certain of our righteousness. While the quest to distinguish between the relative good and the relative evil may be an innate human need, Pretending to a knowledge of good and evil is an act of idolatry that leads us not to a theosis, that idea of deification, that transformative process where the aim is a likeness to or a union with God, but it leads us to Babel, the overwhelming desire to storm heaven's gate, and we know how that ends, further, further alienation from one another. Amen. So we stand as we proclaim our faith and our God who loves us in the words of Christ. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of well being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge from baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
so we sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray in the power of the Holy Spirit, the source of healing and grace. Give to your church grace to be constant in all the duties laid upon her, while looking always to the greater calling beyond this world. Heal her divisions and make her one in love, so that no evil can enter. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Come to the rulers of this world and make them know of themselves to be responsible only to you, the ruler of all. Give to all who desire the good of humanity a shared will and a common purpose to work freely together. Lord, in your mercy, be close to us in our families, healing the doubts and conflicts that may trouble us. Teach us also to know that all are members of our family, because they are yours. Lord, in your mercy, have mercy on those who have lost their power to resist the attacks of evil. Bless and enable those who work to relieve their suffering. Empower and protect those who exercise deliverance ministry and healers of mind and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Today, in our worldwide calendar of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Myanmar. And in our own diocesan calendar of prayer, we pray this month for the Mullum Mission Area and for Carol Pullman, their mission area leader. We pray for Archdeacon John, Archdeacon of Wrexham, and we pray for Gregory, our bishop, for all his ministry for and on our behalf. We pray for all those known to us at this time who are in need of our prayers. Those who have asked us to pray for them, and those who have nobody to pray for them. We pray for continuing development, producing and rolling out of the vaccination programme. We pray for Colin and all those in nursing and residential homes, for Daniel and all those in prison, and for their families. We pray for Jane, the lead chaplain, and the chaplaincy team at the Mylar Hospital. And we pray for Alan and the chaplaincy team at HMP Berwyn. We pray for those known to us who are sick at this time. For Richard, Tim, Louise, Derek, Joanne, Mo, Malcolm, Gordon, James, Mal, Anne, Nancy, Bob, Peggy, Mark, Harry, Dot, Evanwi, Chris, Peter, Joshua, and Gwen. We pray for those who are bereaved at this time, remembering in our prayers Paul Fermin, Katie, and the family, Jill and Peter Walters, and Judith Gavin and her family. As Jesus was raised from the dead, so grant resurrection and new life to those who have died trusting in him. As we remember Diana Fermin, Simon Walters, and Kate Gammon. Through that, though their outward bodies have perished, clothe them in new garments of salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray through Christ by whom we are healed and empowered to be his people, as we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So can I invite you to stand for the peace. Christ, the Prince of Peace, breaks down the walls that divide us.
God has called us to live in peace. Thank never around the whole of the Bible the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We invite you to offer one of the socially distant sign. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. He is your eternal Word, through him you created the universe and formed us men and women in your own image. You sent him to be our Saviour, born of Mary through the power of the Spirit. On the cross, he opened wide his arms of mercy, embracing us in perfect love, destroying the power of evil, suffering, and death. On the first day of the week, you raised him from the dead and opened to us the gate of life eternal. Through him, you have given us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us your own sons and daughters. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, through him, Accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that, by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering this saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. say in the language of our hearts, our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord, 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 our we bring this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. So we come now into our time of communion. Um, if you'd like to receive communion here in church, please uh, uh, wait for Stella to invite you forward. And uh, if you're joining us at home, please join with us in an act of spiritual communion.
come to our post communion prayers. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. In love and understanding. We say together, generous God, you have read us at your heavenly table. Give us the fire of your spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as lights before him, who is alive and reigns in glory for heaven. Amen. And this in trials mission, the God of our Father, you call us all to serve you in the world. Give us the grace to be visible and active in your service, to build your kingdom here on earth, that all the people may come to know your baptism, love, through Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord. Amen. So before our, our final blessing dismissal, uh, various notices. Um, it gives me a very great pleasure to call back to marriage this morning and uh, um, I realise that uh, this is actually uh, um, uh, in one case for the second time, so, uh, but uh, really great to see you again, uh, um, uh, again here for the second set of your bands being read this morning. So, uh, very great pleasure to publish the bands of marriage between John Bernard Finlater and Sarah Jane Green, both of this parish. This is the first time of asking, and also between Benjamin David Ross and Sean and Lee Smith, also both of this parish, and this is also for the first time of asking. If anyone knows any just cause or impediment why these persons may not severally be joined together in the holy matrimony, you are to declare it, and uh, please pray for them as they prepare for marriage this time. Really good, yeah, really great to see you this morning. And so, um, various other notices. Um, just um, an advance notice on uh, this Sunday, uh, next month, so the 4th of July, uh, we've actually booked the civic service here. And uh, because of current restrictions, um, we're not sure that there will be any room for um, anybody else other than the civic park. I'm really sorry about that. It's just the way it's worked out this year. There will, however, uh, be a Eucharist at 9.30, and uh, the Welsh Eucharist Becoming My New Guide will be at 6 o'clock and will uh, resume again at Sunday. So, uh, um, Eucharist at uh, half past nine on Sunday and, um, and at six. So, um, various other things going on this week. Um, if you would like to sign up to uh, volunteer as a welcomer, some stage this week, we've got various gaps. Um, this doesn't have to be a sort of uh, lifelong commitment. It could just be, um, you know, it could just be for this week only. If you see Stella, if you've got any time available this week and you'd like to give in, please, that would be um, absolutely wonderful. As you know, we're trying now to keep the church open for uh, the usual opening times between 10 and 4, and uh, because of so many people uh, having uh, holidays in the UK this year, we are seeing uh, a massive increase in the number of people who come. So, uh, so please do help us with that if you're able. Um, so, um, angels and all sorts of other things going on there. There are various birthdays, and many happy returns to Stella, whose birthday is on Friday. Serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.